Hey everyone, we're going to see how to work with cross-origin resource sharing in a Go application. So if you're familiar with what that is, cores is the common term for it. Um, it's usually when the API or your backend application restricts access from remote origins. Um, so if you're creating an API and then somebody's JavaScript application tries to access it and you have everything locked down, they're going to receive errors. And by default, everything will be locked down. So what we have to do is we have to enable and figure out what should we allow, what type of requests, what type of headers, things like that. Uh, so we will be using the Gorilla Mux multiplexer for this example. There are other multiplexers out there. There's even the net HTTP package, all of which have their own ways to handle this. So again, Gorilla Mux multiplexer. Uh, so I do have my terminal up. We're going to create a new project. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to my go path. And I'm going to create a project called cores project and I'm going to navigate into it. Now, if you haven't done so already, you will have to get uh, the multiplexer. So you'll say go get, and you'll say github.com slash gorilla slash mux. You'll also have to do the same for handlers. The handlers is what allows us to work with cores. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and create a project file. So we'll say touch main.go. You can create that file however you want, and you can call it whatever you want. So we're going to say main.go, and we're going to open it in an editor. I'm going to use Atom by GitHub, but it really doesn't matter what you use um, as long as, as you can do Go development in it. So I'm going to open up our main.go file. Uh, I do have several plugins installed, so if you see some type ahead or uh, it auto uh, imports my, my dependencies for me, that's because the editor is doing so. You may have to do it manually. So we'll say package main, func main, so function main. Um, and what we want to do is we want to create a new router for the multiplexer. So we're going to say router equals mux dot new router. I want to save it. It'll add an import for me. Um, we're also going to um, now say um, HTTP dot listen and serve. We're going to use 12345 as the port, and the handler is just in this case, as of right now, uh, going to be the router. Um, so this is a very basic Im implementation. Uh, cores, everything is being rejected as of now from, the, from external, so from browsers. Um, so now let's focus on actually uh, creating um, our whitelist. So let's start with the allowed headers that are allowed to be passed in. So we're going to say headers equals, and we're going to say handlers dot allowed headers. And we're going to say this is going to be a slice of string. And we're going to specify what headers we want to allow. So the common ones, um, and it's very important that you don't miss any that you're going to be using, because if you do, uh, you're likely still going to get errors. Uh, but the ones that I commonly use are x requested with we're going to be using content type and we're going to use authorization so those are the common ones for headers now what we want to do is we want to say what methods are allowed so how can this api be accessed so what we would say is we would say um, methods or whatever you want to call it handlers dot allowed methods Again, this is going to be a slice of string, and we're going to say stuff like get, we're going to say stuff like post, put, delete, wh whatever it might be. I'm not going to list them all out, um, but those are some of the common ones. Um, so those are the methods that would be allowed to use this API. Anything else will still get rejected. Finally, what we want to do is we want to specify the origins. So we're going to say origins, and these are all the or originating source URLs that are trying to access our API. Um, so uh, whether that be localhost or who knows the scenario. So we're going to say handlers dot allowed origins. Again, this is going to be a slice of string. And this is going to be, in this case, I'm going to say star asterisk. So this is a wildcard. And by doing that, I'm saying, you know what? 
all all host all origins are allowed if i wanted to i could specify specific uh, domains that would be allowed um, but in this case i'm opening my api to the public and you know what unless this is an internal api chances are you want it to be open to the public you want developers to consume your api so now we can make a slight change here um, so instead of request uh, we need to change it a little bit so we're going to say the following we're going to say handlers dot cores and we're going to pass in uh, some items here so we're going to say first of all we're going to pass in headers we're going to pass in methods origins um, and then finally we're going to say router and at this point we should be good to go um, so uh, we've provided what's allowed in cores and we're providing the router that we plan to be using now if we wanted to we can add um, a route if we want so let's say function let's just call this root endpoint doesn't really matter um, for a response we're going to do um, http dot response writer for request we're going to do http dot request um, and we're just going to say let's go ahead and say uh, response dot write and this is going to be byte hello world save it um, what we can actually do is we can actually say uh, router dot handle function the path is going to be the root path we're going to use the root endpoint uh, sometimes sometimes having too many plugins is a curse that added too much information for me uh, we're going to say methods this is going to be get so it'll accept get request we'll save it if we want to uh, we can run it we can say uh, go run dot go and it's running our application now uh, so again our application would have just run by adding router here um, but if we had created like an angular js application or react or things like that and we tried to access this api separately from a different port or even a different domain we would have gotten errors um, so instead now what we're doing is we're saying all domains are welcome to access this api and these are the types of headers that are allowed anything not on this list uh, will receive an error uh, when a request is made so it's very easy to add cores it took me a long time there's not a lot of documentation on it um, and i still i still for whatever reason still ended up with errors along the way